And then we have the enforcer role. So the enforcer's role needs to communicate a clear vision and guardrails of the organization. So you're in the enforcer role, you're in, you're intentionally aiming at the company's strategy and, um, and also upholding the status quo of the organization and changing it carefully and deliberately instead of um, all at once, right? So, um, so you wanna clear, communicate clear vision and guardrails. This isn't, I want you to do X, Y, and Z task. It is, hey, we wanna, we wanna cross the river. What do you need to do to cross the river? And then the, the employee is saying, okay, well, I'm gonna go grab a bunch of bamboo and tie it together. We just finished watching a, uh, the toughest race or whatever. Fiji toughest race, right? So we're gonna go grab a bunch of bamboo and tie it together and turn it into a, uh, um, I forget what they're called, like a billy board or something and, and paddle it across the river, right? So that's, that's gonna be how they solve that problem. Another group might say, well, I'm gonna go over to the local hardware store and, and buy some things and put that together. Another group might say, well, I'm gonna go to the sporting goods store and go get a couple kayaks, right? So there's different ways people may solve the problem. And it's beneficial for you to have those conversations with all of your employees and really pull together the best of breed and help them see that, facilitate that discussion among them instead of saying, well, this person came up with the best idea, so everybody do it that way, right? We wanna, we wanna bring our individual contributor horses to water too and not throw water on their face. So we wanna cross the river, how do we cross the river best? And then facilitating the discussion among your, among your folks. And then um, communicating performance expectations. There's a pattern that happens in organizations every year. So we do these like annual performance evaluations and most people have teams in, in, in technology at this point, most of us have teams that might look like a scrum team or an agile team of some kind. And um, uh, they are visibly all year long trying to deliver as a team, right? We're gonna deliver all these things together as a team. And then we get to performance evaluation cycle and all of a sudden you have these five individuals trying to deliver as individuals with other individuals because they're getting measured individually. So it's important for them to understand from a performance evaluation perspective, what will you be measured on at the end of the year? And then for you to be cognizant of the impact that will have on their behavior. It means they're gonna be, if you're, if you're measuring one person one way and another person another way, they, they might be pulling against each other as they go towards their goals. It's so really getting a picture of how that performance evaluation system plays into how they behave. Um, and then look for patterns among many employees and champion, champion organizational change. So um, this looks like, uh, well, this the performance evaluation would be a good example. Hey, we're measuring people on their individual success and we want them to perform as teams. Maybe as a management team, we should look at creating a set of um, goals that's more representative of the way they work instead of a set of goals that changes the way they work.